Hello and welcome to today's teaching. My name is Pastor Rita Gant and my husband Pastor Tori and I and our church family at House of Power Outreach welcome you to this teaching. We're so excited about what God is doing in your life. Um, this particular teaching I've been trying to get out for about two weeks now. I had um, We had taped it before but there was something that uh, came out wrong on the taping and so we didn't get to get it out. So I'm just expecting for it to be God's perfect timing that is coming to you today, whenever it is that you're listening to it. And I just know that it is a word of truth and uh, straight from the word of God. And so I'm excited that, um, that we get to hear what God is teaching us today. Amen. And humbled that he would use me to do it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this word that will hide your word in our heart and will not sin against you. Help us, Lord, to just really open our hearts to hear from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, today's um, tonight's message is called God Sustains You. And um, it's a message recognizing the truth of God's provision and how to receive it. And then I have another byline here that says, God not only gives us breath, but he sustains our life in every way, in all ways. And so I wanted to talk to you about that tonight. The first scripture that I have for you, um, is Isaiah 46, 4. I have it in the NIV. It says, Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. God says this to us. So, <clears throat> when the Lord put this on my heart a while back to uh, get together uh, this message, I went ahead and did some research on the word sustain because he kept saying that over and over in my spirit. And so uh, to, to, to sustain, God sustains you. To sustain means to strengthen or support physically and mentally. To bear the weight of without failing or falling, without breaking or falling. To uphold, affirm, or confirm the validity of God sustains you. To validate, to give support or relief. To nourish and supply with sustenance and provision. To strengthen, sate and satisfy. To vindicate and to clear someone of blame. That's what God is saying here. He is sustaining you. Even into your old age, He will sustain you. He will support and strengthen you, bear the weight of things for you, validate you, nourish you, give you provision, strengthen you, satisfy you, and vindicate you or clear you from blame. Amen? Um, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am He. I am He who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue, rescue you. When I was looking up this scripture, I uh, found this picture uh, that had the scripture on it. And I want to show it to you right now. I did like that so I could flag my AV guy to pull the picture up. But it is um, a picture that says that uh, the, same, the same scripture and it has a little bear on top of a big daddy bear. And the little bear is just riding along. And, um, you know, the bear is sustaining the little one or carrying the little one. And I think that's great, um, a great little uh, picture to show us of how God, you know, sees us as his little ones and how he wants to carry us and be our strength and be our help. And so um, the next scripture that I have for you is Isaiah 18.35. And I, I hesitated to put that, that picture on there because it's so cutesy. But I really felt like the Lord wanted me to do that because he speaks to people in different ways. He speaks to people, uh, you know, with, with their audio or with, uh, you know, or with their sight. And he speaks to people in different ways. And so that little picture might really bless someone. And even though it seems cutesy or silly, um, you know, God truly does want to carry us and uh, strengthen us and sustain us and take good care of us. And so I hope that blessed you. The next scripture Isaiah, is Isaiah 18, 35. I have it here in the Amplified. You have also given me the shield of your salvation, and your right hand upholds and sustains me. Your gentleness, your gracious response when I pray, makes me great. Hmm, that's... That's such a great scripture. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Praise God for that. And your right hand upholds and sustains me. Now the right hand is symbolic of strength. And we know that Jesus is sat down at the right hand of the Father. Your gentleness, your gracious response when I pray makes me great. Or makes me better. Makes me more. Makes me great. And not 
not in a haughty, prideful way, but in a I'm getting better every day kind of way. The lexicon, I went ahead and did the research uh, for the, the scripture on Isaiah 18, 35. And the lexicon here, which is the, um, the study of each word in the original language that it was written. And um, in this case, it was Hebrew because it was written in the Old Testament. So it says here, the lexicon says here, You've given to me deliverance, rescue, salvation, safety, health, and happiness. Your right hand, your hand of strength, su supports, sustains, and steadies me. Your gentleness, your meekness, and humility at work in me causes me to become much, to become more, to become great. So when I put each word together, that's, that's what it says. You've given to me deliverance, rescue, salvation, safety, health, and happiness. Your right hand, your hand of strength, supports, sustains, and steadies me. God steadies us. Your gentleness, your meekness, and humility at work in me causes me to become much, to become more, to become great. So God is our life sustainer. Have you ever heard this term, life sustainer? Uh, life sustaining means helping someone or something to stay alive. God is our life sustainer. God not only gives us the breath that we breathe, but he sustains our life in all ways. In all ways. He gives us strength, happiness, satisfaction, only through God. So if God is truly everything we need, uh, we need, then how do we receive all that he has for us? So if we know this truth, this truth that God is truly everything that we need, how do we receive the completeness of that? How do we receive that from God? Well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. We receive from the Lord in the same way that people in the Bible receive from God. We all receive the same way. God is not a respecter of persons. We all receive from God the same way. And whether it's salvation, healing, or whatever other thing or promise or gift that God has provided already for us, we receive that by faith. Okay? This fact is emphasized in James 1, 5-7. through which tells us what to do if we are lacking something in our life. The Apostle James said that we are to ask of God, but instructs us to ask in faith and able to receive. Okay? He starts off talking about wisdom, asking, and if you need wisdom, ask God. But then he finishes off, I'm going to read it to you here in a minute, by saying anything, anything that you ask, if you need it, you ask of God and God will provide it to you. James 1, 5-7. through 7. I have it in the King James Version. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. See, God's not going to chastise you, tell you you should know. That's not, that's not God's way. Um, so he'll give it to you without uh, upbraideth you not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So, James begins this passage talking about receiving wisdom, but he ends the passage talking about receiving anything. Well, healing or anything else the word promises is certainly included in anything because anything includes all things. God sustains us in all ways if we just believe for him to do so. So it's saying to us, if you lack anything, just go to God and ask him in faith, but you got to believe. Because if you don't believe, you can't receive. And I, I, I did a little message further back that says uh, believing and receiving. But this the really, the Lord really wants us to, to understand this that that we need to receive by faith. Okay, and I'm going to teach us a little bit more about how to do that. Um, the Word of God makes it clear here that faith or believing God's word brings results, and that we receive from the Lord by faith. There are several more scriptures that I have here to make this point. Let's look at several more. Um, Matthew 21, 22, have it here in the King James. And all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And then Mark 11, 23 and 24, King James Version. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So we are studying on how to receive from God. 
We know from these verses that we receive by faith or by believing. And we also know from these verses that all things are possible to those who believe. Well, all things, like I said, means anything, doesn't it? We know we must believe, but we're, this is what I want to get to today. We're, when God is sustaining you and bringing you all of this, how do you receive it? Where do we believe? Where does the believing inside of us take place? The verses that we've studied so far show us that believing takes place in our heart, not in our head. So we're going to look at another passage that helps us to prove this a little further. Romans 10, 8 through 10 shows us that we need to believe in our heart, not in our mind, our head, our thoughts, but in our heart. What, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we need to believe in our heart. Please note that the word heart and some form of the word believe or faith are used in each one of all these verses I'm telling you about. Verse 10 says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But it's also true that whatever we receive from God comes the same way. Everything that we receive from God by faith comes by believing with our heart. And it's with our heart, not our head, our intellect, our physical senses, what we feel. It's with our heart that we believe. And I know in my heart what I believe. Sometimes my mind tries to battle it. But my heart knows the truth, and your heart knows the truth. So we have to concentrate, think about, and meditate on the truth, which is found in God's Word and based on God's Word. We can't let what we sometimes think or even how we feel change what we know. We can't let the circumstances of what we're thinking about or what we're feeling change what we know in our heart, what we know is the truth. We've just got to dig our heels in and let the Lord sustain us, strengthen us, satisfy us, steady us. Um, the Word of God has much to say about the heart. We're told um, to believe with our heart, but I want to talk a little bit about what the heart is. 1 Peter 3, 4 says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So here Peter uses the term hidden man of the heart and spirit interchangeably, okay? Um, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So the hidden man of the heart um, and the spirit interchangeably. So our heart really signifies it. it is our inward man or our spirit, okay? So we know from scripture that man is a three-part being, a spirit, a soul, and a body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Hebrews 4.12. We don't believe God with our soul, which is our intellect, our emotions, our will, our thought. You know, We don't believe God with our soul or with our body because our body just falls in line with whatever we make it do. We believe God with our spirit, our heart. Okay, But in order for that uh, to happen, we must first, um, in order for us to, to believe the truth, we must first hear the truth okay, and know the truth. To know the truth. Then we need to let our heart, our spirit, capture that as truth. Going back to the scriptures and definitions from above, we can actually form a confession of truth. And when we believe in our heart and we speak with our mouth, things change. Okay? So what we're getting to is we know the truth of God and we believe it in our heart, our spirit man, our inward man. And then we speak it with our mouth, and faith is released to go to work, okay? To make things happen, to change things. That's how you receive from God. You believe in your heart, and you speak it out as truth. And God moves. He moves because he responds to faith, okay? That's what he responds to. He doesn't respond to compassion. Like he, he knows that you're hurting, or he knows that you're in need. And he will move some things, but God truly responds powerfully to faith, okay? The truth that we should speak is God's word. That's, 
that's what we know in our heart, what we believe in our, our, our spirit man to be the truth, okay? And so what I did is I went ahead and I took these scriptures, um, specifically the ones that are talking about God sustaining me and sustaining you, and I put a confession together. And confession is so, so important. It's not a ritual. It's not a, uh, you know, a, a, a thing to say over and over like with vain repetition. But a confession, when you speak it, is, is when you speak truth and you confess it out loud, it goes from your inward man out. And it's a, a declaration of faith and of trust in God. So I made this confession for us, and I would like for you to... Um, to listen and if you want to write it down I can I'm gonna read through it first and then I'm gonna go back through it slowly so you can write it down if you would like to have this confession and confessions like I said are just so important it's important for you to confess the truth God sustains me he strengthens and supports me physically and mentally and in all ways he bears the weight of things for me without breaking or fail, falling or failing he upholds and affirms me he is the one that validates me amen he gives me support and relief. He nourishes me and supplies me with sustenance and provision. He strengthens and satisfies me, and He is my vindicator. He clears me from blame. He delivers and rescues me and brings me salvation, safety, health, and happiness. By His right hand, His hand of strength, He supports, sustains, and steadies me. Through His gentleness, His meekness, and humility at work in me, he causes me to become much, to become more, to become great, to become more like Him every day. God sustains me. So that is a, a, a confession straight out of those scriptures that we just read. And I'm going to go over it again just a little bit more slowly so you can write it down if you'd like, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and, and wrap up this teaching. Um, let's see here. God sustains me. God sustains me. He strengthens and supports me, physically and mentally, and in all ways. He strengthens and supports me, physically and mentally, and in all ways. He bears the weight of things for me without falling or failing. He bears the weight of things for me without falling or failing. He upholds and affirms me. He upholds and affirms me. He is the one that validates me. He is the one that validates me. He gives me support and relief. He gives me support and relief. He nourishes me and supplies me. He nourishes me and supplies me with sustenance and provision. With sustenance and provision. He strengthens and satisfies me. He strengthens and satisfies me and he is my vindicator and he is my vindicator he clears me from blame he clears me from blame he delivers and rescues me he delivers and rescue me rescues me and brings me salvation safety health and happiness and he brings me salvation, safety, health, and happiness. By his right hand, his hand of strength, he supports, sustains, and steadies me. By his right hand, his hand of strength, he supports, sustains, and steadies me. Through his gentleness, his meekness, and humility, through his gentleness, his meekness, and humility, at work in me, at work in me, he causes me to become much. He causes me to become much, to become more, to become more, to become great, to become great, to become more like him every day, to become more like him every day. God sustains me. God sustains me. So that is a great confession for you to make as often as you feel like doing it, every day if you'd like. It's taken straight out of the Word of God from the scriptures we read. And like I said, to receive from God, you simply need to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. 
I can't, like I said, say enough about confessing God's word over your life and the lives of your loved ones every day. You know, oftentimes people confess things and make declarations because they believe in their heart and they confess from their mouth a lot of negative things. Oftentimes people believe in their hearts and confess from their mouths the negative things of this world and then they have them, which shouldn't surprise them, but often it does. But we shouldn't be like that. We are believers. We are trusting God. We can't be found saying negative things like, you know, if I believe it in my heart and confess it in my mouth, outside of my mouth, I've got to put a guard on my heart. And I've got to put a watch over my mouth. And I have to make sure that what I'm saying lines up with the Word of God, or it shouldn't be said. Silly things like, this thing is killing me, or, you know, those kids will never get it right, or we're never going to have enough, or anything like that, none of that should come out of our mouths, ever. Those things should not be so, should not be said. And if you find yourself... Um, saying negative things out of your mouth, be careful because the Word of God says that out of the heart, the uh, mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we have to be careful that if we see, if we hear a red flag coming out of our mouth, we need to search our heart to make sure if that's what we're believing is truth. And if that is, then it needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be fixed. And just, all we just have to do is just repent to God and say, God, I'm so sorry. That is, not, that is not your best for me or for my family or for my loved ones or for those people I was talking about. And just repent and ask God to help you, to strengthen you, to sustain you, to, you know, steady you. And He will be right there by the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you as a believer to help you to speak only the truth. And, uh, you know, get out of that rut of speaking negative things. Speaking negative things. Speaking negative things. You know, it's not cute. It's not funny. It's, um, it's detrimental to your life and the lives of those that you love or those that are around you. So it's important as a believer for us to take the responsibility to clean out our heart, to make sure there's nothing in our heart that is um, not supposed to be there, that we don't believe things that are not true. And, um, you know, find out from the Lord what is safe and what is out when it comes to what you're believing and help, uh, let him help you uh, to speak only the truth. And when you do that, faith is released and your life can change radically. God really moves quickly when he is responding to faith. And when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that's what you're doing, is speaking faith. So we need to be found believing and confessing God's truth over your life, your loved one's lives, um, and when you do that, I promise you things will make a change for the good and your life will become better in every way because God is faithful to his word. And truly, that's all that he needs from us. All he needs from you to really start working mildly in your life is for you to believe and speak truth. I mean, just believe and speak it. Just believe it and speak it. And I'm not talking about this whole movement that came a few years back, you know, uh, blab it and grab it and all that junk. No, I mean, God's principles do work. And, you know, a lot of people were scooping up on that idea, but they couldn't main, maintain them. They couldn't, it, could, it wasn't sustainable um, because they didn't have the character to, um, to follow through or the faith even. But what I'm saying is, is we're not just speaking things out because we want things, but we are finding the truth of God's word in our heart that God will meet your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's the truth. And then when you speak that out, God responds to that truth. And faith in action starts going on in the spirit realm first and then in the natural. So be found speaking the truth. Amen. Believing it in your heart first and then speaking it out in your mouth. Like I said with that confession, it's important to speak the right things. So, like I said, uh, God is faithful to his word. And truly that's all he needs from you to really start working mightily in your life. So believe and remember that God sustains your life in every way. God sustains you. And when you recognize and believe in your heart the truth of God's life-sustaining provision and power for you, then you are in position to receive it and to receive all that he has for you. I'm going to read that again. When you recognize and believe in your heart the truth of God's life-sustaining provision and power for you, then you are in position to receive it. Amen? 
And uh, even if you've been living for God and speaking the truth and doing everything that you know to do your whole life, God still has another level for you. Amen. He's excited about your future. He's excited about your family. And, you know, all he wants you to do is just go a little deeper and get a little closer. And I just want to encourage you tonight that, you know, God's word is true. And he is faithful, and you need to be found speaking God's word, amen, over your life and over your family's life and over your situations and, and just over everything. And God will not let you fail or fall. God will, he will, he will not fail. He will always come through for you. All right, I'm almost out of time. Let's pray real quick. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one that sustains us. You are the one that steadies us and strengthens us and satisfies us, Lord God, and, and vindicates us, Lord God. And, and you are our validation, Lord God. And we're so grateful to you for all that you are. Thank you, Lord, that we hide this word in us, Lord God, that we remember to, to meditate and to think on and to put in our heart only truth, Lord God, and to speak out of our mouths only those words of faith and truth. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for sustaining us in every way and in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, and we're so excited. Uh, wish you a, a happy, blessed Easter, and we will see you next time.